car with our new Chevy C10 Cheyenne pickup truck, at least new to us, from 1976. What we're going to tell you about over a whole series of videos, and starting today with an introduction video, is how we're going to take this truck and turn it into the ultimate everyman's work truck, haul truck, and yet have it be looking good eventually when we're done. Perhaps we should start with how we got the truck. You see, we've been watching for a while to find a pickup truck that we felt we could redo and use as a work truck, as we said, and still have something that we were willing to ride around in and have it look good, but never change the fact that ultimately it's gonna be a work truck. Now in the Southwest, where we are, Prescott, Arizona, you can find a lot of trucks that don't have a lot of rust. And as we take you around the truck, you'll find out there's not a lot of rust and she's pretty straight. How did we get it though? Well, just a mile up the road at an automobile repair place called Casey's, we happened to pick up the truck one day because we had some parts delivered for a Kissel up there, had to pick them up and bring them down here. Casey had the truck sitting there. And the story I got is another gentleman who'd had his truck repaired at his place, could not afford the repairs on the real truck and pay Casey all the money. So he said, hey, would you take this truck for the repairs on the other truck? So Casey got the truck. He wanted to move it to somebody just to get the money out of it. And so we got a pretty straight truck to work with here that's obviously in pretty rough shape otherwise, you know, cosmetically, but it physically works pretty good. Let's look at it a bit. Going down the side here, you can see that they took all the trim off. So if somebody had started working on this truck and they've done some stuff with, there's some spots like body filler, etc. And obviously they were planning to change the truck's appearance in quite a bit of areas. In particular, as you'll notice, there aren't holes all the way down the truck. So they started filling in the holes for the trim that was actually originally on the truck. I can tell you from looking at it and going over the truck that it was actually two tones originally. That doesn't mean I've read the numbers on it and researched it. It just means that's what I found by looking over the truck. But so far, it's reasonably straight. And then you, do, you can see that it's got some surface rust, but rust through doesn't seem to be much of a problem. We've only got three places we found on the truck where it's got rust through. We also have a filler cap here on this side, which is important because this is actually a dual tank truck, which makes it very nice to drive. It's got the dual tank option and it's got the switch on the dash for that. That's one of the problems we have to deal with though. We've already been under the truck and found out whoever it was that was working on it or somebody before them completely disconnected the tank on the passenger side. So we're gonna have to restore that to operational so we can use it on the truck for the future. Pretty much everything here tells you when you get inside, etc., that it was originally, as we said, a Cheyenne from 1976. And it was a pretty loaded truck with what we can see for options that were on it. So we'll move around and show you some of the other things now. Up front here on the truck, you can see that whoever had it was kind of a skull freak. You'll find out their skulls all over the truck right now. Front bumper, or at least the bumper bounce are bent. The bumper's bent up a little bit. No point in re-chroming that bumper. New bumpers are available, so inexpensive. It doesn't even make any sense. The grill here, wrong grill for the year. Don't even know which year it is. We'll put the correct one in there when we get around to it and fixing that up. That's all cosmetic work. But structurally, it's sound. Here we are looking under the hood. And as you can see, most everything is dirty, grungy, etc. Our current plan is just to get everything working nice. It is certainly drivable right now. We've been driving it, but we're trying to get all the systems working. But the one thing that you can see that's real nice under here is we had to replace the power steering pump right here. Power steering pump was completely shot. It was leaking like a sieve. So we have a new pump, and this is something for people who may have never done it. This vehicle, about 43 years old. So if you're gonna replace a power steering pump, don't even think of reusing the hoses. So both the high pressure line and the low pressure line have been replaced. We have zero leaks now. Power steering works perfectly. So that's the one major repair we've had to do to it so far to make it drivable. All right, here we are in the interior, which as you can see is incredibly rubbed out. Except, of course, our instrument panel. 
The instrument panel was completely broken when we got it. So since we're gonna redo the truck, we actually got a decent instrument panel. It was wood grained originally, so that's been put in here. The instrument cluster has been had the plastic polished. I've also gotten the lights working. There were no working lights in here when I got it, merely because of bad wire connections for all this time. And the light switch was completely missing. I mean, the actual switch was there, but you had no knob system. So we put that in, found out the light switch was worn out, and so we replaced the whole thing. So we've done a little bit obvious work here. We've repainted the needles on the dials, but not everything's working here. We know our fuel gauge isn't working properly. So we've got to work on that. We already told you we've got to work on our twin tank system and the switch for that is over here. So there's a lot of things to do here, but so far we've mostly just been doing things to again, get the systems working. A Little bit of cosmetics since we had to take it apart anyway. One of the big problems up next is it does, the signal lights do work, but they don't cancel. So we're going to be rebuilding the inside of the steering column as necessary, getting rid of this steering wheel because I checked out and these steering wheels for ones that are correct are in the realm of $200 used. So at that rate, we're gonna put on a modern steering wheel and make it look a little nicer anyway. But as you can see, eventually, we gotta do the whole interior. Everything's shot, but everything's solid. There doesn't seem to be any rust through anywhere, so it's good. As I mentioned earlier, the goal for the truck is to be the ultimate everyman's hauler work truck and still have it look nice, but truly be usable as a work truck. So we're not gonna do things that are gonna violate the use of the vehicle as a work truck. But we're gonna show you lots of different things we do to turn it into a true work truck. If you've already watched how we installed the bed crane, that was the first thing we did just so we could move something right away. However, we got a lot of other things we've planned for this truck. You're gonna see in the future that we're gonna put a complete air system in it, and we don't mean an air suspension. We mean an air system we can actually work with on the truck. We're gonna be putting in a power inverter system so we could actually take this truck somewhere, take a welder with us and weld with it. We're gonna put in the necessary items to make this into an appropriate tow vehicle. We have a car trailer, we're gonna make it into a tow vehicle that's actually usable. And we have a number of other neat things that we're gonna do that are make the truck user-friendly from a work standpoint, something that you could actually drive every day, still like the way it looks, and not be ashamed of it, and not really just want to keep it like this and let it deteriorate, but also, remember, keep it a work truck the whole time. So you're gonna see every modification we make to the vehicle to keep it in that condition, and what we're gonna to do to finish it ultimately to make it look decent, nice. And the whole goal for this, we're gonna to try to do this all for under $10,000. And that's gonna make the truck really usable, really nice. And to give you a start, we paid $3,000 for the truck as it sits. And what we're gonna do throughout the actual series of videos of this truck is we're gonna tell you the costs of each of the items we do, roughly, and at the end, we're gonna give you the total cost. So you can see that everybody could do what we're gonna do with this truck themselves and have something they could use all the time for actual literal work and still drive it to work it on a daily basis and be happy with it. So we hope you stay tuned and are interested in what we've got to show you. Air system in it, and we don't mean an air suspension. We mean an air system we can actually work with on the truck. We're gonna be putting in a power inverter system so we could actually take this truck somewhere, take a welder with us and weld with it. We're gonna...